Hello and welcome back to the channel. This will be video 5 in the Python tutorial series. So if you missed the first ones leading up to this on getting started with Python and some of the basics of variables and uh, using certain different basic functions of Python, uh, be sure to check those out if you're unfamiliar with those concepts because we'll be using those as we go forward. So in our previous video we explored how to build a four function calculator but it had its limitations. All you could really do was call it once and do one operation with it. And today what we'll be taking a look at is using functions in Python. And a function is basically any code that you might want to use and reuse and it would make more sense to group it in some sort of reoccurring code structure where you can use it over and over again. So if you think about an actual calculator, adding, subtracting, multiplying, raising something to an exponent, these are things you would want written as functions, not just one-offs, because you want to be able to call it any time. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start by creating an addition function. And right at the beginning, it's going to look just like what we did for our calculator, but you'll start to see the value of it as this video goes on. So in Python, to create a function, you start with this def, that's defining something as a function and then you give your function a name. Uh, Python has something called snake case where you name things lowercase and if you're gonna have multiple words like add to numbers you use underscores in between the various words to um, just keep it consistent with Python's naming convention. But all we're doing is add. If you have to pass variables in like there is a way we'll take a look at later where you could do the add function and you could actually pass the numbers that are being added in, you put those in these parentheses with commas in between them, just specifying that those are parameters that will be used inside the function. But we're actually going to do all of our gathering of the numbers and adding them together inside the function. So let's get started. The two things you're going to need to add something together are going to be two inputs, which again, if you missed the video on getting user input, be sure to go back and check that out but we're going to ask the user for two numbers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that down. And once we gather two numbers, enter a second number. Then inside this function, we're just gonna go ahead and print the two numbers added together. And right there you can see that we're skipping all in the previous four function calculator we had four different if statements saying if it's this operator if it's that operator if it's that operator do this and and you're grouping this code into one spot so to create a full calculator you would just um, sorry to create a full calculator, you would create a define add, a define subtraction, multiplication, division. If you had an advanced calculator, you could create additional functions. But then, as you'll see, all you need to do to actually call one of these is type in the name of your function and then these parentheses. And if you created a function with parameters, which we'll look at in a minute, you would put your values in here. So we're just going to go ahead and run this. And we're going to see it asks us for a number. We say 12. It asks for a second number, 23. There, it gives us 35. And you could be saying, hey, this looks exactly like not using a function and just hard coding these lines of code. Um, and, and you're correct until you start seeing how we can add a second function. And we'll call this uh, go again. And we're going to ask the user after they add if they want to add two more numbers. And so this is actually, we're gonna make a variable called again, and we are just going to ask for an input. Want to add again. And we'll tell them what sort of values we're looking for, yes or no. And then what we're gonna do is if they enter Yes, and again, if you're confused about any of the formatting that you're seeing here, be sure to go back and look at the previous videos, um, or you can just trust me that it is the way it is because it is the way it is. Um, but if they enter, if they say they want to go again, we're going to run that add function again, just like we did the first time. And then the only other thing we need to do is after we're done adding, we actually have to call this go again function. So before I run it, if you just see 
these are not actually doing anything until called. That's the nature of a function. It's a block of code that you store somewhere and you can call on anytime you need it, but it's not going to run. So Python runs top to bottom and the first actual instruction that does anything here is us calling this add function. So you can see you're gonna come through and add once and then we're running the go again function and it's asking if you want to add again. And you have the option to say yes or no. I mean, we could add the condition saying like else return or else pass. I mean, you can put things in that are basically null code. Like else pass here is us saying anything other than if being again is just going to exit the function. You could put this in. It's completely unnecessary for this scenario. So we're going to run that again. We're going to add 12 to uh, 348. It's 360. And now we'll see. Let's say, yes, I have another addition I want to do. Well, that was 360. Let me add 834 to it. Oh, you can't type 360 plus 834 in. Let's do 33. Yes, I want to do it again. 12. And be sure not to type out the entire mathematical equation as an input. But there you can see we can say yes, and then it's going to keep looping until we actually say no, we're done. So right away you can see rather than have to stop this code and start this code, stop this code and start this code to add multiple different sets of values together, we can just go ahead and create functions that call each other and give the operator the power to exit any time they'd like or run it again as many times as they like. So then what you get is the ability to do something like this where you also create a subtraction function and we're just going to do number one minus number two if they call this. But then now we'll say if you want to add again, then we will say what function? And we will tell them to do addition or subtraction. And so now we're going to basically do this entire nested loop that we just created. We're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to check if, and we'll call that function. We're going to check and say if the function is addition, we're going to go ahead and add. But then again, going back to what we already talked about, if the function is subtraction, then we are going to up and why are we getting red squiggly lines under add and sub oh because they have to be indented inside the ifs of course <coughs> formatting is something that you'll be fighting with as long as you write code so don't worry about it and in this scenario we actually will do an l if um, you you don't really need to, but for clean code's sake, you're saying you never want to run both of these things. So now let's just go ahead and say, we're going to start by adding and we'll do one plus two. Want to add again? Uh, yes, but this time I actually want to subtract. And now I want to do 24 minus 12 and we get 12. And so, I mean, there are all kinds of ways you can clean this up. Obviously, rather than saying want to add again, you could say want to go again. Rather than just starting by calling the add function, you could actually call the go again function. So you actually have the power to choose what your initial, um, you know, function that you run is right off the bat. And you get to say whether or not you want to do addition or subtraction. Um, that, that could be a nice feature to add. My, my point is not showing you every possible iteration of functions. My point is when you create functions, and there I actually tried to run a function that had already stopped, but um, when you create functions, you give yourself an enormous amount of power to do things that you would have to hard code every scenario. Um, you can see right away if you if you start answering prompts incorrectly it just exits it's, it doesn't crap out it doesn't give you an error message it just exits um, and, and there are 
are all sorts of things you can do inside of functions. You can do error handling, you can call sub functions, you can pass a whole other routines inside of functions. Um, we'll get much more into advanced functions as the tutorial series goes through. But for now, this should cover the basics of why you would want to use functions and how functions work. If you have any specific questions about what you saw here or the best way to go about another application, just uh, drop a comment below and I'll try to get back to that as soon as possible. In the meantime, uh, be sure to check out the channel. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you found this stuff useful. And as always, thanks for your time and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.